Hi, everybody, and welcome in. I hope you all had such an amazing Thanksgiving with your loved ones, whether you were here or traveling. I just want to say that, again, I'm so thankful for each and every one of you, and I'm very excited to be sharing today's live coaching with you. Today, we're all going to be talking about diving in deep head on to this holiday season that's already started. I know that we have Hanukkah going on already. We have, you know, all, all different types of celebrations coming our way. And maybe you're already feeling a little bit of the stress of it all. And so I thought this would be a really great time for us to hit home with a bunch of really powerful strategies, mindset practices that you can start implementing today so that we can finish out the rest of the year really strong, feeling our best, energized, and ready to take on the new year without feeling like we need to take a break from um, you know, this last month. And so it's December 1st as well, which even makes it more exciting. We're at the start of a new month. So we're going to get right into it. What I'm going to be doing is going over kind of a couple different categories that we can look at this idea of how to prevent holiday burnout. And really this goes for any time of the year, but specifically I know that this is that much more challenging when it is during the holiday season. So we're going to be looking at this through the lens of movement, nutrition, recovery, and mindset. And so I'm going to show you a couple different ways and talk you through how you can think about how to show up for yourself in each of these different categories so that you really feel your best. So we're going to begin with movement. All right. So the reason why I say movement is because this is very open-ended, right? It's a spectrum. We're not talking about, you know, how many workouts you can get in that kick your butt and make you feel like you're dead. We're also not talking about you know, just not doing anything at all, right? It's all about finding some kind of balance and harmony with all of these different categories. So when it comes to the holiday season, this is a time where I can definitely sense that we are feeling like we don't have the time to work out. Maybe we're so overwhelmed with different, you know, choices and equipment and, you know, classes and things like that, that we just do the overwhelm freaks us out. And so we, we, we just do nothing at all. Right. And we just wait till maybe we feel like we haven't worked out in a month and whatever. And now you are kind of already nervous about that, right? Because you haven't kept up the consistency. You're not sure how your body's going to take it. So let's prevent all of that. And the reason that it's so important to stay with some type of routine is to really help that consistency stay strong, even through these difficult, um, you know, times when scheduling is harder. So what I recommend is just to reset from whatever you did last month or last year even and see your and meet yourself where you're at right now so that you can try to set a new and realistic type of routine for yourself now. So this is kind of just like releasing from the expectation like, oh, I need to or I should do, you know, X amount of workouts per week at this type of intensity, you know, maybe right now because of whatever's on your plate, it really only makes sense for you to do maybe let's say three workouts a week um, or two workouts a week, whatever makes sense for you. I would recommend though, at the very minimum that you do try to get in one strength training workout and one unloaded workout per week. And maybe it doesn't mean um, a full-blown workout with, you know, sets and reps. Maybe it could just be a walk outside. Maybe it's a yoga class that you take with somebody that you're spending time with. Um, but I think you definitely would need some type of balance between those two at the very minimum. And it takes off the pressure from yourself because again, we don't need any more pressure. So this is a great way for you to kind of keep things light and be kind to yourself for movement. Moving right along into nutrition. So what I recommend with nutrition is to have some make ahead, either meals or snacks that you can count on, that you can just whip up really fast with minimal effort. They don't stress you out to make them and you can keep them in the fridge for a longer period of time so that as the week goes by, when you're busy, when something comes up, you have a few options to keep you fed and nourished with you know healthy options that are actually going to not upset your stomach, not kill your energy, and help you stay on track for your goals. So some things that I really love are overnight oats. 
I can definitely give you guys specific recipes. If anything pops out that I mentioned, please let me know, but I will be posting. Um, baked protein goods, like you guys have heard a lot about my like protein loaves, protein muffins, that basically you just add protein powder to whatever baked good um, that you have using, you know, preferably more of the anti-inflammatory ingredients, minimal sugar, things like that. And that way you can just grab and go in the morning or when you need a snack. I'm also a huge fan of either buying or making your or, or making it yourself a big batch of hard boiled eggs. You can eat them straight up. You can make them into an egg salad. You can throw them on a salad, whatever works for you. And then cold cuts are really great as well. Finding the antibiotic free uncured options, delicious. And these are just things again, that can hold you over when you're in a pinch and you need something fast. So I recommend doing that. I also recommend as always, having plenty of protein smoothies. If you're someone right now where like cooking is just not even in the cards for you, then maybe it would be really smart to pre-plan that like one meal of your day is always gonna be a smoothie. You can just keep all of your ingredients frozen for the most part or non-perishable because you're using supplements. Um, and different superfoods that don't need to be, you know, refrigerated. And then boom, you have a really easy go-to meal. That's one less meal to think about for the day that, you know, you can count on to give you all of that nourishment that your body really needs to feel its best. And then going along with that, I do recommend that you always are carrying around some type of supplementation, whether it's collagen or protein in a flavor that you really enjoy that goes with a lot, because at the very least, if you're in a pinch, and you really don't have time to buy or prepare anything, you can have a protein smoothie. And especially this is really good when you're traveling. I just came back from a trip and I know how important that is. So always keep that stuff on you in your car, in your carry on, in your purse, obviously at your house, you will not regret that. And then the last two things I want to say is when it comes to your nutrition during the holidays, it's easy to get out of schedule and out of balance. Try your best to keep your normal routine and things that maybe you might not realize that you've been doing, but maybe work really well for you might be a weekly grocery haul, like just going to the grocery store one time a week. So you don't have to keep going back and forth, pre-plan how much food you're going to need, pre-plan your menu, more or less things that you want to eat, and then make your list get that out of the way. And now your fridge and your pantry are stocked with what you need. So that's step one, get the groceries. And then the other thing I would mention is definitely have a day or two, maybe like in the beginning and mid of the week, mid midweek, where you are actually preparing the food and plan that in your calendar. Like I'm going to dedicate 30 minutes to an hour to prepare a couple proteins and veggies. And then maybe the second day, I'm going to make the second half of my protein veggies, maybe a carb or two. And I think that's really going to help you because that way you can use leftovers and you're in a rhythm of preparing food for yourself. So try not, that's helping to not get lost into the blur of the holiday season and how that can be, right? And plus you're gonna be less likely to eat out so much and order food when you just have that habit of preparing meals at home. Okay, last uh, or second to last category, we have recovery. So recovery kind of spills into self-care, definitely relates to mindset, but right now I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about your general you know, um, energy and replenishment. So the first thing I'm going to recommend is that you do set a non-negotiable bedtime at least three times a week. I didn't say seven times a week because obviously our Basel, right? If you're in Miami, parties go late, things like that. And that's fine. So enjoy those when they happen. And then on the other days when you know you're not going to be going out and you're going to come home and have a pretty regular day, set your bedtime and hold yourself accountable to that because your body is going to bounce back on those later nights more easily than if you just kind of let it be a free for all the whole month, right? The second tip is to schedule in regular energy refuels. So what do I mean by that? Try to make a list of some different activities or practices that really make you feel comforted, relaxed, or things that just make you feel like you're having fun create a list of those and then try to, you know, touch on those throughout the week, if not daily, um, things that you can do throughout the week for yourself and make that a priority because oftentimes we just forget ourselves during this time. We're always doing things for other people. So this is a great way to prevent that. Some ideas could be taking a daily nap, 
doing a meditation, even if it's just for a couple minutes. You could also take a break to stretch your body if you find yourself sitting a lot or trying to get a lot of work done, getting a massage, nails done maybe if that relaxes you. Um, really just depends on what works for you. And then finally, this is probably the hardest, is maybe consider a technology timeout. This is a great time when you're spending so much time with loved ones and you really want to be present, right? So this could be a great time where you maybe dedicate some boundaries around how often you're using your phone, maybe how often you're on social media. I like to consider the, the different sources of your technology that tend to stress you out or give you the most overwhelm. Those are probably the areas that are worth taking a break from a bit more because that might actually be contributing to your sense of burnout more than you realize. Finally, mindset. And I'm just going to kind of go quick fire with these because um, we have talked about them. And I think, you know, you might resonate with one more than the other. So mindset wise, how can we prevent burnout? Well, saying no more often. Number two, consciously releasing from some self-sabotaging limiting beliefs that tend to come a little bit more frequently around the holidays, like feeling guilty, feeling shameful about things, uh, feeling overwhelmed, right? Just like allowing yourself to kind of ruminate in those feelings, just making the decision to release from that can be super powerful. Um, another idea for creating a more healthy and positive mindset around this time of year is reaching out for support when you really need it. A loved one, a friend, a spouse, a coach, here for you guys. Reach out when you need that extra helping hand. Enforce your boundaries, right, around the activities or maybe even the people in your life that maybe tend to drain your energy. And doing that with a sense of tenderness because you're really meeting yourself where you're at, but fierceness that you're going to be assertive about those and you can do it in a way that is still respectful for those around you and really make sure you're communicating those. Cause I think that's a huge one is, you know, we can set all the boundaries we want, but if we don't talk to those around us who it involves, it's going to be difficult to those, for those to come out, right. For those to really be a reality for us. So make sure you communicate. Um, and then finally, check out, check in with yourself throughout the day. Ask yourself, how do I feel physically? How, um, how am I feeling emotionally, energetically, mentally? And then whatever need maybe isn't being met, try to listen to yourself and be there for yourself, just like a good friend would be for you, right? So that's it in a nutshell, guys. I want to make these short and sweet for you because I know you're listening on the go. These are all different tips on how you can really show up for yourself this holiday season in a way that you're not, you know, leaving yourself behind. You're prioritizing yourself and your needs first, and you're not going to be over-functioning, right? You don't have to go over the top and really push through. What if you could enjoy the holidays this season with more joy, with more peace and harmony so that you can really like feel it and be there and get the most out of it? Because you didn't, you definitely deserve to enjoy it as well, right? And we can also be generous and loving for others around us. So I hope this was helpful. Again, think about what might be your next action step for this week or maybe for this month. And let me know down below what you're going to be doing. I can't wait to hear what you guys are taking action on, whether it's in your movement, nutrition, recovery mindset, or maybe a little bit in all four. I want to let you know that I'm here for you. I look forward to seeing you guys next Wednesday at same time, 2 p.m. And take care. Bye, guys.